So we've been talking about unsupervised learning methods, and in particular, the, the last couple of days of videos, we've been focused on the problem of uh, clustering. We've uh, talked about k-means, which is sort of your first go-to uh, algorithm for clustering. And then we've also uh, talked about uh, using Gaussian mixture models for doing uh, clustering. So for both the soft boundary k-means and our Gaussian mixture model approaches, fundamentally we have probability density functions uh, that we're using in order to uh, describe our clusters. With the uh, soft boundary approach, we're specifying what the uh, cluster location is. And, and with that, we're really describing circular uh, clusters in the feature space. Once we got to mixture models, we also added uh, scaling and uh, covariance to the underlying Gaussian distributions. And so this is allowing us to talk more generally about uh, different kinds of cluster shapes. In particular, we can now specify ellipsoidal clusters. So we can squish uh, or, or stretch out certain dimensions. We can also take that ellipsoid and we can rotate it. And, and that rotation there, that's, that's uh, really capturing covariance between different features. Both of these methods are iterative uh, processes. And as it turns out, there are lots of uh, local maxima that we can actually get caught into. What this means is that when we execute the uh, learning procedure, the solution that we end up in uh, will depend quite wildly on the initial guess that we make uh, at the beginning of the uh, learning process. And as it turns out, the quality of the solutions that we find also can vary quite dramatically. So typically when we're faced with uh, doing gradient search in uh, these spaces with lots of uh, either local maxima or local minima, the, the typical thing to do is to actually perform the learning process multiple times with different starting locations. And then uh, after we've uh, converged for each one of those, then we choose the one that is performing the best. And that could be with respect to a training set, or we could also imagine introducing a, a validation set as well. For the soft boundary algorithm, we have that beta parameter that really uh, controls the sharpness of our Gaussian distributions. For the Gaussian mixture model approach, though, uh, the algorithm itself actually gets to choose the, the shape of the Gaussian. And finally, all of our uh, algorithms that we've looked at require us to specify the number of clusters ahead of time. And this is the case for many different clustering algorithms, although there are some out there that explicitly reason about when new clusters need to be created in order to handle parts of the space that are not being captured very well. How we pick this number of cluster hyperparameter can be quite tricky. Uh, we typically engage in a certain degree of search here. And, uh, and then the question is, how do we actually make the choice as to which one is the best. And the typical approach is to use a, a regularized cost function. And this cost function trades off two different things. First off, we want the learned model that we have created to explain the training data that, that we're currently using. And another way to say that is we want to maximize the likelihood of the training data but we also want to minimize the complexity of the model that we have. So, so what that means here is that we, we want to keep our, the number of clusters relatively small. There are a number of different scores out there that you can use to measure this combination of uh, likelihood of our data and complexity of our model. And two very common ones are called the Bayesian information criteria. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that abbreviated as BIC. And there's also the uh, modification to that called the Akeki information criterion. Uh, and that is abbreviated as AIC. And if you go and look at your Gaussian mixture class documentation in scikit-learn, you'll see that there are actually functions for both of these uh, that uh, that you can call to measure the performance uh, for a given data set. What one will ultimately do is try out different numbers of uh, clusters 
and then for each uh, choice, measure either BIC or AIC, and then pick the, uh, the number of clusters that uh, optimizes that whichever metric that you've chosen. Mixture models are really a very powerful and general idea. We've used Gaussian distributions here in our conversation, but we can actually use any probability density function that we want to use. This can allow us to make more intelligent uh, decisions uh, if we know something about the data that we're presented with, uh, and in particular, the shape of the, the manifolds in the feature space, we, we can make choices about appropriate PDFs to try and better capture those shapes. The other cool thing is that we can work in other metric spaces. We don't have to work in a Euclidean type space, which is what we've sort of been assuming uh, we're working in, in all of our conversations. Something that we do in my lab is that we actually reason about orientations in three dimensions. And in particular, one can describe probability density functions uh, over these 3D orientation spaces. Um, here, you're actually working in something called unit quaternions, but uh, that uh, topic is beyond the scope of what we're doing here. This wraps up our conversation about clustering. You've got a coming homework assignment where you'll experiment a little bit uh, with some of the uh, clustering algorithms. And I hope that you'll also uh, do a little bit of playing on your own with your own data sets.